listeners, and welcome to another footnote episode of the Fantasy Animation Podcast. I'm Alex Sargent. And I'm Chris Holliday. Chris, today we are doing claymation, which is a term you've suggested you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to hear about uh, claymation. I think I've accounted the term probably with the works of Ardman, but I don't want to steal your thunder here. Um, he's nodding everyone. So <laughs> can you tell me what it is, but also can you tell me why it's different from stop motion animation, which is a term that we've we've explored in one of these footnote episodes before. Yeah, so this is um I suppose this is a rare instance where a technique, let's say, that is closely connected to stop motion, and in fact, claymation is is a form of stop motion animation. We need to sort of make that make that clear. But claymation is a is a rare example where a, a particular kind of technique has has become synonymous with a particular kind of studio. So I suppose in the digital context, we might have a studio like Pixar synonymous with computer animated films and then we have competitors we have a, a different kind of contemporary studio system with dreamworks and disney all buying into the computer animated um way of telling stories we might have studios synonymous with particular software so pixar producing render man and then licensing out this proprietary software to other studios that that creates a, or dictates i guess a, a degree of self-similarity between computer animated films in this case, we have a claymation style that is not only synonymous with the Ardman studio, so the Bristol-based Ardman studio, it's also a technique that is not often thought about in relation to other studios because it's very difficult to, and I can't think of any off the top of my head, other non-Ardman claymation films or shorts or adverts. Or, so, so it's a very interesting... Because, yeah, is this because the term it is kind of create like there are other examples in film history for i can think of dynamation which is the kind of harry Housen's term yep. for what he's doing um and you know the, the term sounds cool it's because it's a marketing tool is this similar to that or is this a term that kind of has become what what ardman is known for by kind of people that write about it yeah, well, I suppose there's a again animation as history, as you say, Harry House and um, Jerry Anderson, you know, the Thunderbirds, Super Mario Nation, all these sorts of yeah. particular techniques that certain and it's often not studios but individuals that are pioneering a new kind of technique. Um, I, I think the the answer to your question is is rooted <laughs> in the history of plasticine. So, on the one hand, Ardman. Uh, it has is synonymous with this kind of quote unquote signature style, this use of stop motion claymation. So it's this silicon based, it's not really clay, it's this sort of silicon based material out of which they create kind of characters. But plasticine itself is invented by William Harbour in Britain in 1897. Um, and so kind of malleable clay, uh, the use of malleable clay for stop motion animation can be traced right back to. to you know, Edwin S. Porter and J. Stuart Blackton and all these kind of trick film, the Edison Company, mm. and then a bit later on the Fleischer Brothers in the or the Fleischer Studios in the in the US. And Paul Wells has argued that it while there is a history of clay and, and kind of model making within particular kinds of, of um, early animated films, uh, clay animation was never kind of really consolidated until uh, a guy called Will Vinton, who made an Oscar winning short clo called Closed Mondays in the 1970s and then trademarks claymation in 1981. And suddenly we have this particular kind of technique that is kind of consolidated. It's semi-industrialized. And it's kind of recognised as, as Wells would say, he calls it a subgenre of animation. So there's this really interesting. Yes, it's a technique, but but it's and that has its roots in its genealogies right back to to the 1890s and and the the arrival of of plasticine as a as a kind of toy, I guess, a, a model okay. a model making toy. But it it kind of Ardman and it's sort of a very famous television series. Um, so morph character that begins in the in the um, clay animated Greebles sequence from Vision on their the program. Um, it's it's in the eighties that it becomes something that is trademarked and synonymous with their um, spirit. It's this weird thing where the the style and aesthetics become a reflection of a studio's spirit. Okay, so we're in the we're in the uh, we're in the mid early eighties, early to mid eighties. Yeah. This term yeah. is kind of coined and codified and things like that. Yep. Clay has been animated before. 
yep. this is a new way of doing it that's semi-industrialized, which is an interesting phrase because Luddite over here always thinks of Ardman as being, you know, Nick Park in his shed, um, sticking plasticine up on the wall and, and photographing it. So just flesh <laughs> out what exactly if I was watching someone do claymation, what am I what am I looking at? Yeah, well, clay obviously clay can be animated in lots sorts of of different ways and it can be figurative and it can be non-figurative and if you're an animator like Jan Svankmeyer clay can do all I think this is his film dimensions and dialogue has these sorts of mutating and morphing clay model these clay busts that essentially um yeah trans transform in front of the spectator's eyes um Ardman's way of doing this sort of silicon-based plasticine model that's not really clay at all um, is a lot more figurative. It's a lot more kind of character-based. It is rooted in not actually the free-form fluidity of clay as a product, but it's about taking a kind of, I want to say like an armature and creating kind of characters. So you have movable, you have in the case of Wallace and Gromit, you have plasticine claymation figures that have interchangeable parts. They have multiple mouths. They have multiple clothing, multiple arms that the clay is being used in service of character. But it's slightly different from a lump of clay being mutated. It's not clay as clay. It's clay in combination with mod skills in model making and these sorts of hidden armatures and joints and replacement mouths and um and I guess a way of animating character that is not the the animation of a singular object, but it's it's Wallace and Gromit and their fifty different mouths that relate to different kinds of expressions, different uh, gestures that can be parts can be swapped in and out. So it's a I guess it's a you're right that Nick Park and and, and Ardman have this sort of quaint local domestic image of 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 production when actually it's 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 closer to a production line than than we perhaps give it credit for. And, and actually the claymation style, I don't really thought about that, but the replacement mouths and these big boxes with different kinds of Shaun the Sheep faces and different legs and different, is like a production line. It's, it's but a kind of, kind of an animated one. Interesting. Okay, so it's 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 a more industrialized, more character based. I mean, to yep. use a crass analogy that we always you know always relate things back to Disney because we're lazy, but like it's sort of like <laughs> a like you know like Disney are doing with cell animation in the thirties with hyper realism, making it fit within a series of kind of um, rules that are more realist, more you know um, based on kind of solid forms, all this kind of stuff. There's a similar parallel to be drawn here about the way in which Ardman are using clay as this kind of um yeah hyper yeah it's it's not messy it's very um sh uh, there's a sheen to all of this yes absolutely and and it's interesting because Ardman themselves had in the 90s they were they were already moving towards um emergent computer graphics in a range of short films so there's a number of short films um where they're using computer and, and, and commercials as well they're kind of using computer animation but claymation has become this sort of the public face of the studio and as i said it's this it's this interesting space where even though the studio is heavily um kind of connected and supported by mixed media forms of production um claymation has become this com this space of of uh, uh, where yes yeah, i said where style is conflated with spirit that there's something about the handmade and the craft-based value that we attribute to to um, claymation and, and stop motion I guess more than other forms of animation where actually it's it's their signature style and they are the craft based studio in an era of computer animation and computer animated filmmaking of course they partner up with a couple of studios um, they partner with DreamWorks and they uh, for flushed away and they partner with with Sony for Arthur Christmas and they actually migrate their claymation style which is both the technique but it's also the look of the characters they have very specific character designs that presumably lend themselves to these sorts of replacement body part structures right. yeah um, and part of the anxiety around their partnering with these big US studios is are they going to retain that house style or are they going to be swallowed up by by this era of pristine visual digital illusionism essentially so it it is a technique but it's come become a lot more than that in the same way that that I suppose yeah hyper realism is speak it's not just an aesthetic style it's a political category an aesthetic stylistic um historical like there's a lot more lot going on with claymation more than just morph Okay, so we're basically out of time, but what any key pieces of literature um, people can go to if they want to learn more about this? Yes, so uh, Annabelle Honus-Rowe has edited a book on Ardman um, 
Studios, which features none other than a couple yeah. of couple of folks sitting on this call some some good chapters and some bad in that one Um. (laughs) (laughs) yes um so i would say uh, yes i would say um i would say that i would say rachel mosley's book actually handmade television which i think we've we've talked about when we did stop motion perhaps stop stop frame animation for children in britain that talks a lot about um yeah kind of the, the i suppose not just the practice of handmade but its relationship to craft and then of course um paul ward and caroline ruddle's book on on um kind of craft craft the crafty animator so craft based animation as well which i think is i mean there are bigger bigger books on van norris's book on um kind of animation in britain and things like this these bigger sorts of pl- the things things that locate Ardman within a particular context but in terms of the animation side um yeah anything to do with craft and handmade and of course bella's book on Ardman, of course featuring as you say ch- chapters um including my chapter on on Ardman and digital technology and flushed away and yeah that's my little plug for the day as I said, some good and some bad. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks. That was great, Chris. Um, if you have a suggestion for a future footnote episode, uh, email us at fananim research, F A N A N I M research at gmail.com. And you can use that same handle to find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye. Mm-hmm.